Hey y'all, Coach in Fight here, got Stacy with me. Hey y'all. In today's class, we're going to be talking about one of the most important things that you can be doing in this season. Talking about Tisha B'Av, the fast of the fifth month. Yep, we're talking about charity and charitable deeds. We will be covering the second part of Similitudes 10, where we will be talking about fasting, charitable deeds, and almsgiving. Which is necessary to get into the tower which many people call New Jerusalem or the Third Temple, that tower that will be made up of the spirits of the 144,000, performing charitable deeds, which is loving our brother, along with obedience to the law, is necessary to get into this tower. The charitable deeds give us merits, which are necessary to make up for some of the wrongs that we have previously done. And we can see in the King James Version of the Bible how necessary these charitable deeds are. In fact, there are a lot of verses from the King James Version being displayed on the screen. We won't be talking about any of these, so you might consider watching the video twice. With the second time, you just read those verses that's on the screen, unless you could do both. So throughout this video, listen for ways that you can learn to love your brother and sisters and... Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and leave us a thumbs up. Yep, those are considered charitable deeds too. It helps out our channel by doing those things, so help us out. I'm sure you'll get credit in the kingdom of heaven for doing so. With that, let's jump right into it. For he that wants and suffers inconveniences in his daily life is in great torment and necessity. Whosoever therefore delivers such a soul from necessity gets great joy unto himself. Right here I'm thinking he's talking about as far as your little daily needs. You can be tormented from not having your little daily needs met. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that those that um, help you with them. Mm -hmm. That they will be blessed. Yeah. Is that what you're getting? Yeah. Well, the, the whole thing that he's saying here is to be charitable. He's saying for those who can do charitable deeds, right. make sure you do do charitable deeds. Yeah. Right. If you if you have the ability to actually do something for somebody, you know, and, you know, talking about the people with jobs, you know, and, and people think, well, I'm, I'm, I live under the poverty line. I don't have any extra. Oh, yes, you do. Because there are some of these servants of, of the Most High out here who are living with zero income. You know, they can't afford a bar of soap or a tube of toothpaste. You know, mm -hmm. you're thinking you may not be able to get a new car or you may not get be able to get some new drapes from, for your windows. And some of these people are homeless. You know, you, you're thinking that, you know, you, 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 you got to eat uh, oodles or noodles instead of eating steak. And some of these people ain't got no oodles and noodles. You right. Know? And he tells me to stress it here, so I'm going to stress it. You need to be doing something. You know, if you if, if you work if you work and you don't have much extra time, then, yeah, you need to be spending your money. You need to, to uh, um, find you a charitable organization. You need to go down to the corner and find somebody to do something. You need to, you, if, if money, if you, if you don't have time, then you must have money, and you need to be spending that money on doing charitable deeds but for the rest of us you know there's plenty of things we can do you know we can help the elderly we can help widows we can read to kids we can you know find some type of charitable deed because it is these charitable deeds that's going to help us get into this tower well i was thinking why would he put this here at the end because it's all about merits right it's all about merits those merits are necessary for us to get in the tower and merits are the same thing as charitable, charitable deeds? We gain merits through our charitable deeds. You can also gain merits through pain and bad stuff happening. Smashing your finger in that door is also going to give you merits too. See, this is why I say that it's so important that this book should have been in uh, the canonized books. Because the average person doesn't know this. Yeah. Especially, they yeah. They don't know that. These things have to be done. If you don't do this, there's a chance that you're not going to get into that tower. Remember one element of my testimony. I don't tell this part so often. But remember that shortly after the whole Mayan thing, when I you know, was getting back into scripture and everything, mm -hmm. was the time we had a huge snowstorm in our area. Right. And I was coming home from work in the middle of this snowstorm with these bald-headed tires on this little... Uh, um, Honda Civic 
and the car wouldn't go. I couldn't get the car to go up this little bitty hill or whatever because it kept sliding in the snow. Well, praise the Lord, I saw this individual walking in the snow. I had actually passed him twice. He, I passed him once, you know, and when I got bogged down in the snow, he walked right past me. And then once I got going again, I passed him, you know, and, you know, and he ended up walking past me again. And here was the third time that I saw this individual and I asked him, did he want to ride? This individual had been walking all day long. Here was five after 5 p.m. You know, he had been walking since that morning where him and his family had been in an altercation and he was leaving going to a different family that lived 60 some miles away and he was going to walk to their house. Thing about it, he decided to walk to their house on a day when that, that area received the biggest snowstorm they had gotten in years. Mm -hmm. And he was wet. His shoes were wet. It was about to get dark. He was His clothes were wet. Right. And he wasn't even halfway there yet. And he was walking. He wasn't thumbing. He wasn't trying to get a ride. He wasn't even thinking about nothing else and, and, but just walking. And I stopped to ask him. Turns out, you know, end up saving that guy's life, I believe. Because I think, you know, that he was going to pass out. He was going to die in that snow. Yeah, we ended up bringing him, bringing him home. We brought him home. We, we gave, I gave him my dinner. Um, I gave him some of my sweatpants and clothes to put on while we, you put his clothes in the washing machine. Mm -hmm. We put his shoes on top of the vent and let them dry out. Right. He stayed there overnight uh, um, in, our, in our room in the basement. Right. And then the next day we got up. Of course, I had to go buy some tires for the car. But after I got some tires for the car, I ended up driving him all the way to Georgia. Right. This guy was walking from uh, 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 Spring City, Tennessee to Dalton, Georgia mm -hmm. in the snow. Right. Yeah. And I believe it was because of that charitable deed, that, that act, that thing that I did. It wasn't that big a deal for me. But I believe it was because of that that. The father really started moving in our life and started helping us. Because I, soon after that, things just turned around. Yeah, yeah, and 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 people have to do that stuff. People have to find charitable deeds. You have to stop and help people on the road. When people ask you for money, you have to give it to them. You know, you, you when you know you see somebody broke down, you have to help them. These charitable deeds are what's going to save us. Or like our, I think it was our daughter or one of our sons that says, when you see that hungry person asking for something, you have to. You have to act. You have to give it to him. You have to. You have to do something. You cannot go without getting these charitable deeds because you're not going to survive. The tribulation by itself is not survivable. And the only way we're going to get this angelic help we need is if we're helping others. If we're being stingy, you know, I, I've, I've threatened to do this class a, a, a number of times. Your stingy ass wife is going to get you thrown <laughs> in the hell. You know, if you can't get past that stinginess, it's going to get you cast in. The, it's going to it's going to cost you your life. I think you should do that class because I'm learning because I was I wouldn't have said that I was a stingy person. I was a person that would be like, um, what would I I would be like, you know, I have. Well, Just most enough for me yeah, well, and me and my children. Yeah. And, and but I was actually being, I guess, what you would call it, stingy. Yeah. And then there's a lot of people. What they're doing is they think that they only have enough for for them and their children. And you know, I don't like to pick on women too much, but it seems like it affects them a whole lot more than it affects men. I would think so. Yeah. Women, women tend to be a whole lot stingy. They have the mindset, you know, to be they need to get their own stuff. You know, mm -hmm. they need to do for themselves. You know. Um, that type of attitude is going to get you cast into hell. It's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you the tower. It's going to keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And going, going on here in 26, it will tell you what those, um, these inconveniences are to that person who's, who, who doesn't have. Well, let's go on to 26. For he that is grieved with such inconveniences is equally tormented as if he were in chains. And many upon the account of such calamities, being not able to bear them, have chosen even to destroy themselves. So they're saying that commit suicide. They have committed suicide. People are, have, have, are committing suicide. People yeah. are. 
because, well, first of all, it says that the people who suffer these inconveniences, you said that, they, you know, you, you said that they kind of small day-to-day -day stuff. We're, we're talking about food. We're talking about clothing. We're talking about shelter. Mm -hmm. And these people, you know, not being able to provide for themselves is like being in prison. Mm -hmm. it, and it is. It's, I've been in prison and I've been without and it is very similar. It's like mm -hmm. you're tormented. It's like you're in chains. You can't do anything. You know, the thing about being in prison is that you have to be doing what they want you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they got you bogged down. Well, that's the same thing with, you know, being without. Right. You can't get up and go get you something to eat when you want it. You can't do this. It's, it's, it's similar to being in prison. And the thing about it, we don't have the necessary information, you know, with all these books being hidden from us, we don't always have the information to know that, yeah, the some of these things are divine, you know. The Father uses hunger to try us, you know. Mm. We go through all of these, so we don't, we don't recognize these as being part of our strengthening process. We see it as being torments and pains and troubles, and so there are people who are committing suicide. Well, I would just say that when we first moved down here, and we were, it was, I, in my mind, it was just really bad because we went from a place of having anything and everything we wanted mm -hmm. to just having, I mean, we didn't have food to eat. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, there were days we actually literally did not eat yeah, at all. Yeah. Yeah. We just tried to, just had enough that we could give to the kids and we would go without. Yeah. Or, you know, just didn't have, had less than. And I would be taking my little walks and I'm like, Lord, is it really worth it? You know, because it was just so bad. I didn't know how to handle it. I've never been in a situation like this before in my life. And I wasn't thinking about killing myself, but it was just tormenting. It was it was just so painful. So when you say you, you say you asked him, was it really worth it? So what would your choice have been if you had decided that it wasn't wasn't worth it? What, what would you have done? I don't know what I would have done. I would have, I would have possibly given up this year, gotten a job, and gone on back, go back to the world. Yeah, but now what about the servant of God? What about the true servant of God, where those things are not a true option? He right. can't give up. He can't. He know he can't just go get a job. He right. can't just say, you know what, I'm just gonna walk away from the Father and do whatever. Right. Suicide. Right. That mm -hmm. it seems like the only option. And it was because of, as it's saying here in uh, Hermes, those inconveniences. There seemed like no good way out of it. You know, we can't, I definitely don't want to turn my back on the father. And, you know, well, what, what other options were there? That wasn't, a, that wasn't an option for you. That wasn't an option. That, that was not an option just to, just to go get a job. You know, people say that out of their mouth real easy. For some of us, that's not an option. You know, yeah. we have to continue on this path. We have to stay in this fight. No matter what comes our way, we have to stay doing what we're supposed to be doing. So you can definitely relate to when he says that the torments and the chains. Twenty-seven. He therefore that knows the calamity of such a man and does not free him from it commits a great sin and is guilty of his blood. So people need to know this. Yeah. People, this is just of the most important because it's like you would be saying it's the same as if you killed them yourself. Yeah, and, and, it, and it is. And so here you have a person, you know, maybe they're a relative, maybe they're a neighbor or a friend or whatever, who is still in the world. And is still, you know, enjoying, you know, uh, uh, credit cards or food stamps or, you know, whatever government assistance they're getting or whatever, you know, they're, they're getting from their own efforts or whatever. And she's looking at you trying to serve the Lord, trying to, you know, uh, work towards this new type of lifestyle. And she's saying something like, you need to get your own. You mm -hmm. need to do for yourself. Yeah, if you, yeah, your blood would be on her hands if she, if something happened to you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, she definitely needs to know it. Mm -hmm. She needs to know that, you know, that's the reason why the father gave her something in the first place. Yeah. That's the reason why she has something in the first place, not for her own enjoyment. You know, it, that, that, that type of attitude is what's going to end up costing, like I said, it's going to cast her and her whole family into hell. You know, she's really given 
that stuff in order to help the children. Could you imagine what it would be like if people knew that? Yeah, I'm thinking about, you know, as we was listening to the uh, the parable of the elm and the vine, yeah. where he's telling him that the, that's the reason that you have this here, good yeah. job. You're, you're having this good job is because you're supposed to be helping people with it. Yeah, that's why he gave it to you in the first place. Yeah. But the thing about it, it doesn't tell you that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's a lot of people thinking that they're blessed, Yeah. you know, and then they're not, we're, we're not being told that we're actually supposed to go out and do stuff for other people, and so we're being stingy. Definitely going to be held accountable for it. Number 28. Wherefore, exercise yourselves in good works. As many as have received ability from the Lord, lest while ye delay in doing them, the building of the tower be finished, because for your sakes the building is stopped. So he's telling us here that, remember the, the building, there was a stopping point to this building. Yeah, the building is delayed right now. Stop and here. he's telling us the reason that this building is being delayed is for us to get ourselves together, for us to get right with helping, with merits, with charitable deeds. Um, helping others. Yeah, yeah. Once we start doing this, then the building will start up again. Well, the building is going to get started regardless whether oh, we yeah, do it yeah, or not. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. thing is, we want to be in this building. We right, want to be right. in this tower. And doing these good works is one way that can help us to get in this tower. Yeah. Remember, there's actually only two ways to survive the tribulation. There's actually only two ways. You got people out here storing up food, people out here going to church every day, people out here doing a whole lot of stuff. But the only way you can survive the tribulation is, one, uh, keep the commandments. And we're talking about the law. We're mm -hmm. talking about Exodus chapter 20 through 24. But the only other way is to do charitable deeds, mm -hmm. actually helping people. Don't well, do just thinking about it, um, Coach, those are the two things that he just said. Yeah. He told us the commandments and charitable deeds. Yep, and that's, that's all covered way. here in, in similar to 10. Yeah. That's yeah. the only the only way to survive. Yep. So and it's in and, and it's in it's in all of the scriptures. It says the same thing in the third testament. It says the same thing in the in the New Testament. It says the same thing in the in in the Old Testament. Charitable deeds is important. It's it's highly important. I'm saying it because if this is the end of this book. We got what three more verses to go, and he's stressing that uh, charitable deeds is the way to go. Yeah, you the have to, to. You know. Um, you know, I, I try to do both. You know, I try to. You do. You're I very good at it. Try to live in the law. You know, because mm -hmm. I know that's one way to be survived. But just as a like a hedge of protection, you know, I try to do charitable deeds too. You mm -hmm. know, so you know, I really want to get in this tower. You know, and really, it's only one way, only two ways to get in. And you know, some of us are doing both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm seeing just here now how important it is well but, all know, the talking that you've given me i'm seeing how it's important <laughs> it's it's it yeah, in, it in. number 29 are we finished with this one you know let's see if we make sure we finish with this one up here 28 because you know it's talking about you know these good works and how this building has been delayed for us to get in, for us to do these good works, and for us to get into this building. Have we exhausted that? Because that's extremely important. It is important um, to 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 know that Cause not everybody, commandments and charitable deeds. Is, is, it's only two ways. Only two ways. Mm -hmm. And not everybody listening to this channel is keeping the law. I know that for sure. Well, there there there's people that tell us, you know, in churches we're, we're taught that the law is... Is, well, the churches are actually telling us not to do this. It's like they like they're saying, and I know they're not that they're trying to prevent us from being from going into the tower because for one, we are being told that the law is no longer relevant, mm -hmm. so that's t that's taking the law away from us, and we're being told that if they want it, they should get out and get God help those that help themselves. So Blessed they're keeping us, yeah, soul. so we're keeping from doing charitable deeds. Mm -hmm. Listening to those two things, we're told that we're not supposed to, that they're go it's keeping us out of the tower. Yeah, it is. But, you know, you can't really blame those guys, you know, yeah. because they're ignorant too. These books were hidden from them too, you know, even, even more so than us. You know, we can read the Third Testament. We can read Hermes or whatever, mm -hmm. and it won't affect us. Some of those guys, they may read the Third Testament and go down there and start teaching that 
teaching what they hear, and they could actually lose their position, lose mm -hmm. credibility. As people will say, hey, well, you read these other books. So yeah. a lot of times these books are more hidden from them, right. and they don't have this information. Right. But, you know, the thing is, a lot of times Satan gives them their power. They're, they get received their power from the dragon. And, you know, is he elevating those people who will stress this? You know, is he putting those people in position, the ones who say, you're not supposed to keep the law, or, you know, you, you're supposed to get your own stuff, you're supposed to be selfish? Is he promoting those people? Seems I like believe, it. Yeah, I believe that's what it is. You can't blame the people themselves, but, but you know, there is something going on there. Right. All right, 29. Except therefore ye shall make haste to do well, the tower shall be finished, and ye shall be shut out of it. So that's what you were just saying about the building is going to get ready to start, start yeah. going again. Yeah, it's going to, when exactly it's going to start, I don't know. I wish I did know what, what actually, you know, starts the building. Is it the tribulation itself? Is there uh, mass chaos where there's a lot of people perishing and dying? Or is it the wake-up call where every, other all of a sudden everybody starts, you know, reading the scripture and wanting to get baptized. I don't know what it is, but I do know that right now we're given a chance to do the right thing in order, because he wants to save all of us. Right. You know, he wants everybody to be saved. You know, um, even even the worst offenders, even the blasphemous ones, you know, he's just going to give them another chance. You know, he's basically going to recycle them. I think a lot of us are white and round right now, mm -hmm. and he wants all of us in this tower. Yeah, this materialism got us uh, keeping from going into the tower. But the thing about it, you think about it, he said the majority of the, of the stones are white and round, and he wants to save all of them. Now, you put that together, what we're talking about here. These people need to be charitable. They yeah. need to start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. They need to start doing stuff. Helping people out. Helping people. Helping mm -hmm. people. You know? Mm -hmm. um, who does he say to help? He said to help the orphan. Yeah. He said to help the poor. Right. He said to help the widow. Right. And the Levi. Right. Don't forget that. He tells you, do not forget the Levi. Right. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's all through. The Messiah stressed that about the uh, poor and the orphans. But and the Levites, but it's also about the Levites. It's always it's also stressed with the um, the Old Testament more yeah. so. Well, yeah. you, you think about the Levi, who he is. He his his sole responsibility is to stay in the Scripture, to read the Scripture, to study, to understand what is in the Word, and then come back to the rest of us and tell us what's going on. Right. So you know he doesn't really have a legitimate opportunity to go get a job like the rest of us can. The rest of us we can go work at Walmart, give him ten percent of our you know income or whatever, we're fine. But him, it's like he has an obligation on his life to stay in the Word and stay in the Scripture. But it's the, but when you read in the Scripture, it tells us that we are supposed to provide for Him. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to give Him of everything we get. If we open up a bottle of wine, we're supposed to give Him some. We get a dozen eggs, He's supposed to get one of those eggs. Mm -hmm. When we go to the store to buy gasoline for our car, we're supposed to give Him some gasoline. If we buy tires, he get tires. Because that's how he takes care of that's his family. That's how he takes care of the Levi. That's how he takes care of his family. That's how the Levi survives. Yeah, because his job is the ministry of the Lord. Yep. Yeah. It was his job to take care of um, the tabernacle, yep. the, the all, all the little, all the, not little, but all the, the things that happened for the Lord, the Levite was doing it. Not just every common man. The mm -hmm. Levite it was, was the doing, doing those things. The yeah. firstborn's responsibility, you know. Yeah. And, you know, here we are in 2019 where you have people who aren't a Levite, don't even know what a Levite is at all, have taken over the church. They've gone in and put themselves in elevated positions inside of the church. They are teaching church doctrine opposed to biblical doctrine and you know the church is just a huge mess right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what are we telling the Levi? Get your own. Get a job. Mm -hmm. Go get a job. Yeah. And what are the ones who refuse to go get a job? What are they doing? They're in torment. They're in torment. Like they're in chains. Some of them mm -hmm. even killing themselves. Right. Alright mm -hmm. where are we at? 30. And after he had thus spoken with me, he rose up from the bed and departed, taking the shepherd and the virgins with him. Yeah, so he's he's leaving and he's taking the shepherd and the virgins 
with him, but they're not going to stay. He's going to send them back. Yeah, because a few minutes ago, he told them that they were going to stay there forever. It was going to be right. a part of their life forever. But I think the significant part here, and I think you asked me this is what time. You asked me, why, well, why is he taking them? Right. The thing is, Hermes is actually seeing these people. Right. He's seeing them in the flesh. He's, he's not in a vision. He's mm -hmm. not in a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, he's actually looking at these people. He's seeing, he's seeing the Son of God there, the venerable angel, but he's also seeing the angel of repentance, and he's seeing the 12 virgins. They're in there sitting on his bed right now. Right. So he's telling them, no, I'm going to take them away, <laughs> but, you know, we're going to send them back, you know. Yeah, because they have to dwell in his house. Yeah, they, they're going to come back as the real, true spirit beings that they are. Yeah, because they wouldn't be doing him any good if they were just living in his house, following behind him every real day. People. Yeah, real people. <laughs> Probably, you know, he's going <laughs> like, uh, to gonna 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 end up crazy. He's going to end up losing his mind, especially when his <laughs> wife and kids start saying, who is that over there? Oh, that's yeah. face sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's long suffering. She got a problem with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't be real people. They gotta come yeah. back in spirit. And so that's what just happened is he's taking him out of this this similitude and he's great, you know, send them back as uh the real spirit beings that they are. Alright. Verse thirty one, how be it he said unto me that he would send back the shepherd and the virgins unto my house. Amen. Amen. Uh that was good. That was that was that 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 made sense to me. Those last two verses, yeah. I got it. And we're having a rainstorm. Praise the Lord for the rain. Praise the Lord for the rain. All right. Um. All right. Let's see. Anything else before we close it out? I guess I have one question, but I don't know if you're gonna go on and save that because no, right. of the, I was gonna say. How the, since the Feast of Atonement is getting ready to come up on us, how is it relevant with the Angel of Repentance with the Feast of Atonement? How do those two work together? Looking in Command 5, we, where the Shepherd of Hermes is explaining to Hermes what it means to do a, a true and real fast. Hermes had started off talking about he was fasting. And the shepherd of Hermes came in and said, you know, this, this fast that you're doing is not profitable to anybody. And then he goes on to explain it to him. He says, first of all, take heed to thyself and keep thyself from every wicked act and from every filthy word and from every hurtful desire. And purify thy mind from all the vanity of the present world. If thou shalt observe these things, this fast shall be right. So he's telling them right there what it means that to, to fast is to basically be pure and avoid wickedness and, or any hurtful desire. But then he goes, on, he goes on in verse 30, he says, Thus therefore do, having performed what is before written, that day on which thou fastest, thou shalt taste nothing at all but bread and water, and computing the quantity of food which thou art wont to eat upon other days, thou shalt lay aside the expense which thou shouldest have made that day, and give it unto the widow, unto the fatherless, and unto the poor. So he's telling them above, keeping the commandments that you have to do charitable deeds. It always goes back to charitable deeds. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's written throughout Scripture. Yeah, that's charitable deeds are extremely important. Because when the Father was laying down the law, he mentioned how we're supposed to take care of these different people. Yeah. And then you look at the Messiah's life and all that he did. I mean, he was a walking charitable deeds. We right. didn't mention healing, but healing and praying for people is one of the main things you could do as far as charitable deeds. Yeah, I think it talks about that in Third Testament. Yep. So, um, extremely important stuff there. All right, so if you didn't get anything out of this, you know, that's one thing you should have got is, you know, do something good. Do some charitable deeds. Right, right. All right, guys, we've talked about a lot of exciting and important stuff in this video, some of which you may not be familiar with, as this is coming out of similar to 10 of The Shepherd of Hermas. This is actually the last portion of that book, as my wife and I have done a verse by verse study of the entire book called The Shepherd of Hermas. So if you would look at the end screens that are pointing up now so that you can go familiarize yourself with the topics discussed in this video, like the tower like the stones as we mentioned in this video we are the white stones the white and the round stones that is extremely important but for you to understand that you would have to listen to similar to nine so go ahead and do that now look for those end screens that are popping up hit the like button if you haven't done so already leave us a comment and pray for us